when we think of yesterday, do you think about uh, what you ate yesterday when you're hungry today? When you go to the bathroom, do you think about when you went to the bathroom yesterday? <laughs> it's interesting, but it is a, it's an interesting reflection. In other words, the crap you did yesterday, do you think about the crap you're doing today? <clears throat> so in other words, the only thing that's interesting about crap is it needs to go out of the body, right? It needs to be released from the body. We don't want it to... Uh, stored inside the body right okay i digress now i titled this the past is irrelevant focus now and what do i mean by that is like uh yeah our our minds and uh our mind right particularly the sanya aggregate where it's perception memory particularly as you get older and older and older you get memories you know, we get memories at any age, but as you get older, you get memories, particularly the bad ones. <clears throat> at least that's what I've found. Um, and the most important thing here, I think, is understanding that memory is just an aggregate. It's just a, as an aggregate. It's just like a file stored there. It's no different from, uh, I guess, if you... Uh, in your apartment or your house, you know, there's there's junk sitting around, you know, something you bought, <clears throat> it doesn't work and you leave it there and it's just stored, right? And so it's just a reminder of a bad purchase or something, right? Something like that. Well, our actions of the past um, actually are irrelevant because they're done. The problem is because this biological framework this human thing our, our nature we like to uh, there's a clinging and uh, you see a lot of people coming to the temple feeling regrets for the past or upset about certain actions and this and that so how do we deal with this because uh, most people when they're alone and it's quiet or at night or when you're in solitude, a lot of memories do come up, you know, a lot of memories do come up. But so do feelings, right? So do feelings of, of certain kinds, unpleasant feelings, pleasant feelings, neutral feelings. And we still have the body as well. So the body, the body goes wherever it goes and it's constantly eating and cleaning itself, isn't it? It's just a constant movement of in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, like the breath, in and out, in, stop, out, stop. <clears throat> it's a constant cycle, isn't it? Constant cycle. It doesn't stop until it stops, right, in terms of the body, right? So where am I going with all this? Well, the past is irrelevant. That's where I'm going with this, but it's relevant. So it's irrelevant in the sense of what you're doing now, of what you're doing now. So when you're trying to do good things now and wholesome things now and trying to harness your power now and harness your capabilities now, the past is irrelevant. But where it's relevant is in terms of good or bad, right? Because we always tend to talk about bad, but also good, is the seeds you've planted, the seeds we've planted in the past. And I've, I touched on this subject before, but now I'm going to go deep into it. <clears throat> because there's a lot of people who, even myself, when you start to go down the straight and narrow and start to straighten out your life and, and try to fix your life, you know, a lot of negativity happens, a lot of bad things happen, usually. And that's that should happen, actually, right? It's like uh, when you're cleaning an old house, you know, a lot of dust. A lot of dust is, comes up into the air when you start cleaning and it's a lot of smells and a lot of grease and a lot of dirt and a lot of rubbish needs to be cleaned out <clears throat> before you can enjoy the, the clean house or the the re the 
renovated house, right? But, and even when you're renovating a house, trying to get rid of the old, there's a lot of dust, a lot of noise, a lot of uh, sweat and tears, right? Sweat and tears are required in order to clean out, say you're refurbishing or renovating your kitchen or your bathroom or a lounge room or you're ripping up a, uh, or you're knocking down your house and rebuilding it. There's a lot of unpleasantries to be experienced before the new thing comes, right? So in terms of actions from the past, which are bad, right? Uh, well, you know, they're going to come home to roost at some point. I mean, you know, Angulimala, for example, the famous story of Angulimala, which is really interesting, is uh, like a, he killed 999 people, right? Now, I'm not going to go deep into the story because I, I, I prefer people to read the story for themselves, right? But this is just my brief account, my brief revision of it. But what's interesting, he was murdered at the end of his life, right? He was, they, they, people gathered around him and threw stones at him until he died, right? Even though he uh, was an arahant, okay? Because there's certain things, certain heavy actions, right? There's certain heavy actions that uh, you'll pay for no matter what. Now, in terms of... Uh, the Buddha, the Samasam Buddha, right? The Samasam Buddha has kind of developed the perfections to a certain point that no, hardly any karmas, will, hardly any consequences will be experienced in the lifetime. But he still experienced where Devadatta tried to murder him and threw a rock, you know, a rock down the hill, rolled a rock down the mountain or the hill, and it touched the Buddha on the foot and the Buddha started to bleed. Okay, <clears throat> so we can't stop bad things happening. We can't stop bad things happening. So if we've lived a life previously to straightening out, that's, uh, I guess, unskillful, bad decisions, foolish decisions, right? Impregnated with uh, anger or emotion or not rational thinking or not reason, with no reason, no wisdom, which is most of us. I have to say, sorry, people, I'm talking on behalf of, very rarely do I talk on behalf of the whole of humanity, but I think uh, most of us have made a foolish decision here and there, some more than others, but uh, they're like uh, plants, you know, they're going to come home to roost. And like I said to a friend of mine the other day, I said, when something bad happens in your life, uh, treat it as paying off a debt, treat it as like uh, that thing matured and it's gone away. You, it's a chance to pay the debt back and it's done instead of getting depressed about it. Because have you ever heard the term, there's no such thing as coincidence? Well, in an absolute sense, it's not 100% true. But, you know, there are, there, there are, I guess, coincidences. But there are also things that happen for a reason, right? And it's usually linked to something we've done somewhere in the past, right? Unfortunately, this is brutal. This is really brutal because when you talk about a lot of sensitive things, which are very tragic and very, uh, let's say, unwanted and non-desirable and, and just horrible, well, sometimes, you know, the basic explanation is what did you do in the past? And we've had this life and then we've got previous lives as well. Now here is where the trap, where the trap is, where it uh, opens up and uh, I guess leads you into the abyss of depression and uh, lamentation and uh, sadness and uh, all kinds of emotions if you're not careful. And that's... Uh, clinging to the past and clinging to these foolish actions, at least the ones you know of. Now, this is unskillful. This is not going to help you. Now, in Buddhism, what we try to do is, we, it's not about forgetting it. It's not about avoiding it. But it's about stopping. Now, stopping is really important here. 
in other words when that memory does come up you don't give it any you don't feed it any energy you don't feed it anything and what you do is you work to do better today now because that's the only thing we can really really do <clears throat> there's no uh, I guess there's no use in doing the mia corpa mia corpa mia grandissima corpa all the time you know like where you're constantly punishing yourself and repenting and feeling guilty for past actions which there's a place for that like feeling shame for things that we've done in the past is there's not there's a healthy aspect to that but there's also an unhealthy aspect to that uh, uh, because it, it can stop you from doing good today and it can also suck the hope suck the hope and life out of your current action because the the, the depression is so strong, the lamentation is so strong that you cling to that lamentation and you cling to that depression and you forget that you can do some good right now, every moment, right? And this is important because a lot of people, myself included, a lot of people that I see, a lot of people that I talk to have this issue. Most of us have this issue. Maybe... You know, we talked bad to a good person, we, you know, we did a bad deal, we lied about something or whatever, whatever it is, only you know about yourself, right? You can't really hide from yourself. You can try, but it's very difficult. So at some point you're going to have to, when you're on this, uh, I guess, path or when you're opening up your awareness and you start looking under every stone about yourself and trying to develop yourself and trying to make yourself better. Well, guess what? You're going to find the can of worms at some point. And when you find the can of worms, the idea is to understand it's just a can of worms. It doesn't need to be opened. It can be, it just needs to sit there. You can't really throw away a, a, a thought or throw away like a, like a, like a memory. Okay. But what you can do is just stop, stop. In other words, you don't follow it, you don't suppress it. Now, this is difficult to do. This is advanced stuff. Like, this is not the easiest thing to do. So you work towards it. You try to understand what I'm saying. It's it, it, when, when a bad memory comes up, if you give it energy, right, if you feed into it and you cling to that bad memory, what that, you get the energy, you get karma, you get consequences from that. And it takes away your energy and focus from now. Rather than saying, so usually a mantra when a bad memory comes up is, that was done, now I resolve to do skillful, skillful things from now on. And you move on. Because the idea is to give yourself strength and, and uh, give yourself uh, you know, a feeling of hope not feeling, but like, how can I explain it? Give yourself prosperity. Give yourself a chance to give yourself every chance, like I said in the previous video, to develop to betterness. So what what we don't need, what we don't need is to be carrying around, you know, luggage full of rocks, rocks of, of all the bad stuff we've done in the past. The idea is to go light. And the only way to do that is to stop. Like the Buddha said to Angulimala, stop stop now this has a lot of meanings because angulimala was able to realize arahanthood even after murdering so many people 999 people is a lot of people it's a lot of people that's a that's a that that leaves some of the serial murders of this century uh, it makes them look like uh, kindergarten right 999 people and he was able to realize. So this is the hope of the Buddha teaching. This is the hope of Dharma. So this is what I'm trying to uh, express today, right? So no matter how bad your past. Now, of course, there's a clause here. There are five things that, uh, that you will pay for. And once they're paid for, then you can realize. But the, there's the five karmas, five actions, the antaraika karmas, I think I, if I pronounce that correctly, that are the most difficult uh, to... Those are so heavy that they need to be paid. So if you injure a Buddha, 
you kill an arahant, if you kill mother, if you kill the father, your father or your mother, or you create a schism in the sangha, they're the high, they're one of the heaviest bad actions there is. So if you've done that, well, even then, what you do is you you still uh, bend your mind towards skillfulness, and uh, you know you pay the debt and you move on. But apart from that, if you haven't committed those five karmas, those actions, well, like Angulimali, you have a chance. You have a chance, right? So this is what it's all about. It's kind of like if we don't understand our mind and and the all the aspects, like for example, what is a feeling? Uh, why do we follow pleasant feelings more than unpleasant feelings? Now, logically, there's a clear answer. There's an obvious answer to that because pleasurable is pleasurable, right? But why is it that good things come from hard work? So in other words, it's not pleasurable to clean a house and, and smell all the odours and, and all the dust. Or, for example, you've got something broken and you fix it and, and you have to go through a whole process uh, of difficulty in order to fix it, right? Whatever it is, okay? Or if you want to achieve something or you want to buy a house or something like that and you need to save the money, you have to go through a whole process of difficulty for most of us in order to come out the other side right so this is useful so why is uh, difficulty avoided and and we go tend to quickly go for pleasure all the time for the gratification more than to understand where the real learning is and that difficulty being difficulty being the good teacher the great teacher a good teacher so in this sense i think we need to clarify in ourselves like for example what are memories and how can we deal with our memories in order to prosper, in order to develop in a better way, rather than let the memory uh, hamper your progress, right? So this will come in handy at some point. It may not come handy to you right now, but at some point in your life when you start to get these memories or you get a memory and it's causing you much grief and lamentation, the best thing to do Right? or a good thing to do, I, I should say. I mean, I don't know if it's the best thing to do, but a good thing to do is to stop first mentally yourself in your mind and not let it uh, gain control. Don't suppress it because that'll, that'll make it worse. Don't follow it either in terms of sati, in terms of awareness, right? And in terms of concentration as well when you're practicing concentration. And this is really important because it frees you up to do good now, to make amends for it. Now, if we've lived an unskillful life previously and when we start to straighten up, a lot of bad things happen, well, what do you expect? What do you expect? Right? So in other words, we have to clean, we have to clean it up. We have to clean it up and that may, takes time. And unfortunately, a lot of these things are out of our control. Right? Because consequences are out of our control. Outcomes are out of our control. It's hard to, it's hard to, for example, there's a, oh, there's so many examples of this one, right? For example, you could go and talk in front of a thousand people and say any given statement, any given statement. Like, for example, say you get up in front of a thousand people and you would say to all the thousand people, you are all good people. Right now, you've just committed a verbal action in this sense, right? So like I'm talking to you, I'm committing, I'm committing to a verbal action right now. So the consequences, the outcomes, how this affects each, each and every one of you that listen to this video is out of my control. I can't control it, right? This is the problem. This is dukkha in effect. This is dukkha in real time. So going back to that example, out of a thousand people, if I say, you're all good people, I'm sure some people will say, oh, that person's a charlatan. Oh, that person's a good person. Oh, thank you. It's good to know I'm a good person. Oh, what are you, what are you trying to sell me? Some people will say, right? <laughs> so the outcomes, like I can have the intention to, do a, to say something good, like you're all good people, but the outcome is not up to me. Whether that will how that it'll affect 
will affect the 1,000 people that hear that message. That's, that is beyond my, my little control here, right? Whatever I can control. And this is what makes it so brutal. Because if I could control everything, I would make everything perfect just right now. <laughs> if I had the choice, right? And I'm sure everybody else probably would too, right? Remember, it's really important. One of the definitions of dukkha, the Buddha said, is not getting what you want. Not getting what you want is dukkha. And that's, that's a deep one. You know, on the surface, it seems really simple. But there's a lot to that statement. And... Uh, not getting what you want and uh, expectations is, is you know limit your expectations from people and outcomes the, the best thing is to have no expectations if that's if that's possible if that's possible or at least limit it limit it to very little little exp expectation but coming back down to the past right and the, the irrelevance of it is because well you know, I look at the simple things first before we get to the complicated, right? For example, yesterday you might have eaten really, really well, but you're hungry now. So all that food you ate yesterday or we ate yesterday is irrelevant now because you have to appease the hunger at the moment. So all you're focused on when you're hungry now is eating now. You're not thinking about all the food you ate yesterday because that's not going to fill you up. It's not going to appease the hunger. And if you had a great bowel movement yesterday, you went to the toilet and have, or a shower, for example, you had a good clean or a good bowel movement yesterday, that's not relevant now when the bowels are full and need to, need to come out, right? Or if you're stinky right now, just because you had a shower yesterday, right now it's irrelevant. You still have to shower now. So, that, so this is the message. It's now. It's always now. The past is no longer no longer relevant in the future. Well, this is now. There's, what is the future anyway? It's what's happening right now at this moment that's moving at the, at the speed of light in front of us right now. So, but mentally, mentally, when we talk about the five aggregates, particularly the sanya, today I want to talk more, I'm hitting more on the sanya aggregate, which is, there's, there's a few definitions of this. There's one, one is defined as a perception. It's how you perceive things. One is just memory. And one is perception and memory, like both together, because I guess they're both together, because if you go deep into this, intrinsically, when, when something happens, 10 seconds later, it's committed to memory. Right, so even like right now, as I'm speaking, what I spoke before in the in the last twenty minutes is now a memory, right? Then you have a perception of that of that experience. So while it's happening, you have a perception of it, and then it gets committed to memory. And this is happening every second. And one thing that we're missing as practitioners is we're not understanding how powerful sanya really is and what it does uh, to us psychologically, mentally. So we need to find a way in order to stop it from hurting our progress and learn to use it in a skillful way in order to become stronger and better in ourselves. Now, one thing memories do is they stay in there. They stay in the minefield and they come up sometimes. Good memories, bad, pleasant memories, bad memories. Even the pleasant memories, like how many times <laughs> I have this joke, this is, I guess before being a monk, it doesn't, not so much now, but I think it's still relevant. It's kind of like uh, many years later, I hear, I hear a song or, and I reminisce, oh, that reminds me of high school, for example. And then I start thinking of the experiences and then I turn the, the music off because for a moment I get all the great memories, but then it brings me back to all the not so good memories. And then I just want to turn that music off because I don't want to think about it anymore, right? And I think maybe all of you listening might have some a similar experience. So sometimes going back down memory lane is not such a pleasant thing. And usually it isn't in a lot of ways because it reminds you of things that you've done unskillfully in the past when and uh, perhaps through uh, 
an immature mind or a, or a mind that's not bent toward, towards realization. For example, maybe a mind that was under the uh, influence of drugs or alcohol or anger or depression or uh, sadness, because even these emotions can harm us in how we do it, in harm us on, on how we deal with the world out, you know, externally. This is why it's important to come to a stop. That's why it's in, the Buddha always talks about stop and to understand. Now, I can't explain stop in all its dimensions, in all the wisdom of the Buddha, because this has many implications. When, when the Buddha says stop, this has many meanings. It has many levels, many stratas of meanings when you reflect on it and you go deep into it. And so I suggest you start thinking about this, what stop actually means. Because if we look at, for example, stop in terms of the five aggregates, this is a deep, deep, deep reflection. This has many, it can take you into a, a whole journey of understanding of what the Buddha talks about when we're talking about stop. And through there, you can start to understand maybe Nibbana, maybe what uh, unbinding means. So sanya, in terms of perception and memory, right? Because the past is just a memory. Memories are just files that are sitting there. Like when you look around your house and you look at the objects in your house, they're just sitting there. They're not doing anything. If you don't touch them, nothing happens, right? Only when you mess with those things, the things happen. But if you leave them alone, nothing happens. So with memories, it's the same. If you leave them alone, right? Like a stopping you just leave them alone you don't suppress it you don't follow it you just see it as a memory only and you don't let it take away from your ability to do good right now you should be able to start building a better life for yourself and hopefully maybe even realize dharma that's the most important thing that i want to express today so remember the past is irrelevant focus now stop and develop wholesomeness but more importantly, stop and stop and stop.